What's up guys, my name is Anton Suarez, and in this video, I'm going to be talking about Ubuntu's Unity running natively on Windows 10. So this article was posted today, and it was by Guerrero24, who posted screenshots of the Unity desktop running natively in Windows 10 with the Linux subsystem. But not, not only can you run Linux applications in Windows natively, but now you can run entire desktop environments. So that's really awesome. I think that's amazing that we're getting to that point. Because a year ago, two years ago, this is, was unheard of. You would never say in a million years that you would be able to run something like Ubuntu's Unity desktop natively in Windows 10. And that is really, really amazing. Now, it's not 100%. Things like DBus, which is a Linux utility that helps everything interface, it doesn't work 100% of the time, which is expected. It's it's not supported. They they said you, you couldn't. They even said, Microsoft said you could not run a Linux desktop in Windows subsystem for Win in the Linux Windows subsystem. And yet we the cool people who take it upon themselves to try things out that said they, that, that people could say cannot be done, it's been done. So this is a cool step forward to maybe even seeing new desktop environments in Windows, which is kind of a side thing where I don't ever think that will happen with Microsoft support 100%. If it does, then again, we never thought Linux would be supported in my, by Microsoft, so uh, that, that can be proven wrong very easily. Um, but this is really cool. And why does it matter? Is there a need for this? Not really. Is it cool? R yeah, it is really cool. Just to do it, just to have it without a virtual machine, it's even better because it's almost like running bare on the metal on the hardware, running bare metal on the hardware, and that's what makes it cool. So the second thing I want to talk about today is the Moto Z. Now I have the uh, Moto X Pure, and I love my Moto X. I've had the Moto X since the first generation, skipped the second, and went to the Moto X Pure. And I may be doing the same thing with the Moto Z, just go right to the Moto Z and start with that phone, or I'll go to the Moto Z 2 because I don't like adopting new things I'm going to talk about, and I'm going to move this, this is the Moto Mods. This is the first phone with modularity, and that's the reason why I want to talk about it, because modularity is amazing, and as you see here, it's the one thing I don't like about the phone, I, I want to hate the Moto Z. I really do. I want to hate it. It makes me want to hate it because it takes away everything I love about this. It takes away the nice dimple. It takes away everything. Now, if you've seen my Moto X unboxing, this is not the original Moto X I owned. This is the second Moto X I've owned. I'll take the case off. This is a blue, normal matte finish Moto X. I had the leather red one originally that broke, the LTE, and that died. But this makes me want to get the Moto Z because it has these pins on the back of the phone that allow you to attach modules, projector, speaker, and sepio battery. Uh, the skins that make Moto so amazing and the, it, it takes away a lot of features, though. There's, there's features that are gone. The headphone jack is gone. There's only one front-facing speaker, which kind of bothers me. It's a front-facing, which is better, but stereo was nice. I don't know why they had to drop the two stereo speakers. I like the design of the, Moto's, uh, the Moto X. I wish they put the fingerprint scanner here. Stuff like that. The fingerprint scanner is down here. The one thing, that's those are the gripes I have. But every gripe I have can be solved with the Moto Mod uh, situation. The pins on the back, they're fully opened. So development is possible for the Moto Mods. F to make Moto Mods, you can make a Moto Mod. And with that fact, that's what makes me want to adopt it. That's what makes me want to be an early adopter of the Moto Z as much as I want to hate the phone. What would stop me from making a module with a headphone jack? Like that would solve my gripe there. That It's cool to think that we could have these modules that will affect the phone. A bigger battery. Um, crazy stuff. Anything you can think of. Buttons on the back of the phone. Cool stuff that we can't do because you don't have the ability to directly interface with the phone. But now we do. And it's fully open. There's a video that shows the module community and partnership that you can do with Motorola. And that's what we're going to be looking into in my local makerspace, the uh, Staten Island makerspace. And that's the third thing I want to cover today is the Staten Island makerspace YouTube channel. This is one thing that I've been getting involved in. It is one uh, YouTube channel I'm helping get started and uh, get content out and... It's going to be fun. It's going to be really good. Uh, we already have one video out, the Steam Wagon, a mobile ma uh, learning lab, which is something the Staten Island Makerspace has been working on for a couple months now. And it's a mobile uh, learning lab, a Steam Wagon, science, technology, engineering, arts, and math. 
and it goes all around the five boroughs of New York. So definitely take a look at this video on their channel, subscribe to their channel, as more content is going to be posted soon. At the Staten Island Makerspace, they have a full metal workshop, full woodworking workshop, welding, anything you can think of, they have it. 3D printers, stuff like that. I'm going to be helping them get video content out on their channel. So stay tuned for that. As always, my name's Agent Suarez. Please rate, like, and subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next video.